This film was produced with the financial support of company Siemens. Modra, a pearl of the smaller Carpathian Mountains. Modra is a small dot on the map of the world, somewhere on the foot of the lesser Carpathian Mountains. All around are winding vineyards, and the streets of Modra are painted floors. It is sung in the old soldier's song that once the vine dressers used to make a blue stone in the stone vessels at their vineyard sheds. The stone was copper sulfate. It then colored a brook into a blue color which flowed across Modra. Is this the full history of Modra, which means blue? Let us be more precise. In its beginning, Modra was an estate of the Bratislava castle. Then, in 1158, King Geiza II deeded it along with the other villages as a gift to Nitra's bishop. According to the Latin text of the deed, the inhabitants of Modra were falcators, but the opinion on who indeed were falcators varies. Probably they were the vine dressers who cultivated the surrounding vineyards with their scissors and scythes. Vine dressers is modders in the old German language. This term is not far from modron or modrons. Modra's people were the royal vine dressers in the area of the small Carpathian Mountains. They were producing wine not only for the royal court but also for the church officials. In 1607, the town received the title Free Royal City. And only a few years later, the townsmen of Modra started to build the city walls and bastions. The town retained only the upper gate on which even today it is possible to read the writing, if God does not protect the city, it is useless for the watchmen to guard. The city council ordered the tearing down of all roofs on the square covered with straw and to re-roof them with shingles. In order for the town to have a pure look, the brook, which flows across Modra, must be kept clean. So, it was forbidden to let ducks and geese into it. It was also strictly forbidden for Modra citizens to keep geese and goats, because Modra is a city and not a village. Today, Modra has approximately 9,000 inhabitants. It is well known for its ceramics industry and its relationship to the Slovak national movement represented mainly by Ludovic Stur, along with many other important personalities who were born at that time. And they continued the wine tradition. Grapevines embraced the entire town, placed around stone water spouts or discreetly placed among pebble houses and the vineyards. When they come into blossom, the whole town is scented with their fragrance, recalling something between apples and lemons. In autumn, all across the town, one can hear the rattle of the spur tracks that have vessels laden with grapes. The vintages begin, and suddenly, Modra is full of wine flies. Here and there in Modra's region, it is still possible to find an old vineyard shed. Modra was also the town of schools. Besides the gymnasium, here are also the pedagogical and cultural academies a forestry school, and a special winery and fruit growing school. A proverb says, Mom, educate me until I am little John. The care of a vineyard is a lot of sweat and work, and he who does not have sorrows, he should buy one. And to develop a love and respect for this work, future onologists, vine dressers, wine growers, wine merchants, and wine pourers study precisely here in Modra and nowhere else for already in an unbelievable 120 years. To talk about wine and to forget Modra's ceramic industry would be a sin. 
And so the next special school in Modra was the ceramic school and the ceramic factory, which have strengthened the ceramic and jug handicraft in Modra. Ladies and gentlemen, Modra used to be the biggest center of this handicraft in Slovakia. But how otherwise, when jugs, vases, or plates of Modra's provenance are by far and wide the most beautiful? The roots of ceramics and jug craft go back to the early 17th century. Come and have a look at how a bit of clay, such a large clump of slippery soil, it changes into a beautifully painted wine jug. See how the clay grows below fingers, for example. Here, a vase. Here, the time passes in a different way. Here are flowing the brushes on Modra's jugs and plates. They have their own techniques for it. Here flows glaze, and below brushes are maturing the berries of grapes. Birds are singing, violets are growing, the horses are galloping, the gumboots are crunching during digging of potatoes, the scissors are snapping as they are cutting. Here is a very merry vintage. The whips are cracking over the horses, and in painted wine vessels, wine is really plopping. Look at Modra's ornaments. Look at those colors. That is Modra's blue. Today, it is still possible to find ceramic masters who have their own workshops. Let us remember once more Ignac Bismeyer, the figure painter who created his motifs from among the humblest people of all Slovakia. Now and then, one has the feeling that his work is some special ethnographic study. It is possible to see that he has thoroughly walked among us, that he touched every stone, passed by every road, much culture from this region is reflected by those figures, the ancient instruments for compressing grapes, the casks, the embroidered national costumes prepared by simple Modra women. Suddenly, it seems that the hard and exhausting work is very closely connected to art, handicraft, human perseverance, and bravery. When a person looks into a showcase full of figures, suddenly in front of you, one sees lively, scrubby Carpathians, you see the sweating and toil-worn uncles and aunts and seem to be able to smell the wine from that region. This exhibition is not far from Modra's gymnasium. There is no doubt that the culture still flourishes in Modra. Just go for a walk through Upper Modra. Take note of the burgers' houses, but also the vineyard houses. Under each one of them is a beautiful, functional cave or cellar, and full it is of wine. The cave of Lida still proudly bears the title, There is no road more beautiful than the one which leads into Lida's cellar. The beautiful old yard with the terrace was full of wine grapes in the autumn. But now the courtyard is full of interesting exhibition areas in which it regularly sees performances by contemporary artists. Not only is one spiritually refreshed, but you can sip some of Modra's good wine and taste some of their local specialties. Continuing down the road, you come to Modra Square. Note that the true burgers houses, which have more floors, are only on Modra Square. Most of Modra's buildings have, as their typical characteristic, large gates, which allow the coming and going of courtyard harvests from vineyards to cellars. The whole line of houses on the lower suburb have this characteristic and provide a picturesque scene for the visitor. On your way, stop and enter the old German Lutheran church. Instinctively, it comes into your mind how rich these Modra people were. Right here, in the church, in front of God's eyes, they built the exhibition hall. 
In Unica, as they call it, you find only fine art. Almost every Sunday there is a concert and you immediately start to like it here. Under Modra's soil, in Modra's land, are resting many famous people. Let us remember at least Ludovic Stur and his brother Karl, who understood that the profoundest and best gift of man is language. Not only its houses, but also Modra's streets testify to how colorful this town is. In proud and rich, Lutheran or Catholic, Catholic or Lutheran, or if you like also atheistic, but not too communistic of one, today it is all the same which one they are. The most important monuments are churches. Quickly, let us go out a bit into the region. Let us go firstly into Harmonia. The name had the goal to express that in land, sun, water, comfort, and health were all in tune and harmonious. As in days past, guests and tourists come from surrounding areas such as Budapest, Vienna, Bratislava, and also Turnova. We enter Harmonia into Zock's cottage which was named after the Lutheran bishop, Samuel Zach. If you are not afraid of steep slopes, you can go by foot or on a bike. From Zoch's cottage, you pass near the former school of German colonists, the Sawyers, or as they were called by Modris people, Hunzokars. From Zoch and cottage and around the cemetery, it is possible to reach the estate house. This was the first house at the Zoch's cottage. Here it was that in 1881, the first Modra people fought for the rights of their nation and established Modra's Burgers Casino. Do you know what yew rocks are? Their name is derived from the yew tree, which takes root only here in Modra. Yew rocks are rocks consisting of silica. They are meeting below the rocky walls and create a kind of rocky sea. Nearby Modra, in Bratislava is the Astronomical and Geophysical Observatory of Comenius University. You may not know it, but it was from this observatory that a few small planets were discovered. Now we're in heaven. Shall we go even higher? Here, through binoculars, one can see falling comets. It is enough just to wish a wish. Astronomers must be the most happy of people. In winter, when snowfall is heavy, you can go down this hill on skis. Those who like the crunchy snow under their shoes can climb the great Homola, which is also called by Modris people, Kugel. It is the biggest hill of the small Carpathian mountains on the west side. If it is not enough just to climb Kugel, here you are at the tourist outlook tower. You are welcome to enter and take in the surrounding regions.
Ancient legend says that on this hill, Edesus, the hero of the Troy War, stopped when he was returning to his Penelope. When Jan Uri Schreiber looked over the small Carpathian's five towns, Bratislava, Sveti Jur, Pezinok, Modra, and Turnava, he said, look at the blue Modra. Blue meaning not only the old name, but more correctly, he meant Azur. It is said that Zephyrus, Cerus, Flora, and Bacchus were competing for who would give to Modra more good, wheat, wine, or flowers. Here, plenty of birds can be heard singing, the burbling of brooks and torrents. Now you will understand that behind all beauty is God. Already two times we did not drink, so now we have to drink, say people of Modra. The most beautiful season here is in the autumn. In fact, already at the end of August it is nice. The first grapes to start to soften, Malaga, Chabana, and Urshai, and suddenly almost all Modra's people have their hands full of work. Then in September, it's vintage. Those born here know that making wine is not an easy job, and in wine can be found truth, sometimes even three truths. Horses pulling the trailer with grapes, Bacchus offering the cluster of grapes, or the sip of last year's wine, or the popular wine tasting. Try to walk during the vintage across Modra and you will see that it is not only the Feast of Wine, it is also the feast for craftsmen from Modra and the wider surroundings. Handicrafts used to be quite successful in Modra. There used to be around 20 workshops. There are always ideal conditions for crafts in Modra. For vineyard businesses, there were working coopers. Numerous too were Modra's potters and shoemakers, which by their products supplied the surrounding regions. Are you curious where the wine is actually produced? Where is leavened, whispering, purifying? Do you have a desire to look into Modra's people behind their doors, to compare their individual cellars or wines? Then visit the days of open cellars. Or do you know what? When you will have desire to wander across the smaller Carpathian mountains, go directly across the small Carpathian wine road. Buy a map with the same name and it will surely lead you into Modra. The wine will lead you as it does the brook. Better to eat more than to drink less, or would you like to taste a young wine? Well, for the first time, the young Beaujolais is tasted in Modra even one week sooner than in France. Vintage, Vino Forum, Vitus Aura, or the Days of Open Cellars, come and have a look and you will see who is more skilled, the young or older vine dressers, which wine is the best, or if the best wine was already sold and by now drunk. By the way, do you know what Modra's wine dressers are saying as a proverb? That there will be as many grapes as God will provide and as much wine as we want. But 
If you do not have a taste for wine, visit Modra just for the ice cream. Right at the square, they have three ice cream cafes, and all of them are the best. But better not mix it with wine. And perhaps, just as Modra's wine attracted into its town many artists, writers, poets, painters, and sculptors, and perhaps a few wine muses, in Modra were performing, and still perform, many important painters, artists, sculptors, musicians, or composers. For example, high up over Modra, in the middle of the vineyards, is a house, which, by the way, was designed by renowned architect Samuel Dushan Yurkovich. There lived and wrote the famous writer Vincent Shikula. Immediately beyond Modra's walls, or almost on them, you will find the studio of academic sculpture Mardian Polanski. Do you know what? Why talk more? Go to Modra and see it for yourself. Theme and script. Cooperation. Accompanying text. Editor. Camera and director. Produced by 